Hi everybody and welcome back to Daisy's Corner. So today I'm going to give you the Daisy 101 guide on how to care for your bunny. Um, not just your Daisy, but <laughs> your bunny. Um, today, in today's video, we're going to discuss everything from how I rescued Daisy to what are her favorite treats, um, what are the products we get out here in South Africa for bunnies, um, Daisy set up in the house, what our um, schedule looks like in terms of free time and free play and just um, yeah basic care for your bunny. So if you are excited to see the video then watch on. I'm excited to share with you everything to do with this little nugget right here. Okay, everybody, so I'm going to start off by giving you a little bit of backstory on how Daisy and I ended up <laughs> together, essentially. So Daisy is technically a rescue bunny. Now, sometimes people give me a bit of flack because they, because they say, you got her when she was really tiny, she's not a rescue bunny. But Daisy was a rescue bunny. Now, I was staying with a friend of mine um, for a couple of weeks and her and her family were well known in their area for rescuing a lot of animals if there was a dog that was dumped or cats that were abandoned or any mixture of animals they were sort of the go-to in their area for people to bring those animals to now someone had thrown away a litter of bunnies baby bunnies um, and Long story short, the person who got the baby bunnies couldn't look after them, so my friend's mom came into the picture. Um, my friend and I, because I was staying with them, I ended up helping out quite a bit with the bunnies, and I'd never hand-raised anything. But these bunnies were so small, they looked sort of like aliens. They were really weird looking, and um, they didn't even have really fur yet. They weren't pink, pink, but they weren't exactly baby babies. Um, I don't know it was you know really strange they weren't um, typical baby bunnies that could be away from mom yet so we ended up having to give them kitten milk and uh, we had to syringe feed them around the clock and pretty much during the day it was me and my friend and at night my mom and uh, my friend's mom would take that shift so we were just um, you know looking after these very demanding very tiny little bunnies and it took a couple of weeks it really did it took about at least four to six weeks and then suddenly they went from you know looking like little aliens to little baby bunnies and i thought okay they're kind of cute i have a heart you know they're <laughs> they're really kind of cute actually and um i got really attached to these bunnies and how they survived such a hard start in life and everything like that and um, you know, when the bunnies got to about a age of two and a half ish to three months, my friend said, okay, well, you know, now the bunnies have to go and find homes and we'll, you, we will start canvassing people obviously in the area who can take on bunnies. And my heart did a little, oh, no bunnies, they can't go, they can't go. And, um, I decided sort of then and there without really consulting anyone, I need one of these rabbits. One of these rabbits is mine. Now, I picked Daisy, obviously, but Daisy was the runt of the litter, and I like to back an underdog. I am one of those people, you know, who <laughs> the underdog in the story almost always is my favorite. So I said to myself, you know what, the tiniest one, the one that had to fight the hardest to stay alive, I want that one. That one's mine. So um, I ended up taking Daisy home. Now, during this time when I was taking Daisy home, I was sort of staying between my mom and my grandmother's house. So, um, you know, I had a rough sort of setup for Daisy. Um, and I was during this time of hand raising these bunnies and sort of going between um, my mom's and my grandmother's house, I was learning a lot about bunnies. Um, and it wasn't until I moved out shortly thereafter I got Daisy, I moved into this place. And I was then able to give Daisy a full 
comprehensive setup so um you know i really i learned quite a bit i was reading all the time asking all these rabbit groups things um and obviously having to reasonably take into account what we have in south africa and how i could best care for my body so then we move into daisy's setup okay so now we're going to talk like i said um, about daisy setup and i want to preface this section by stating that both of these things that i'm going to talk about were graduation gifts so i definitely got away with not having to um, have lots of money for these things that were just given to me um, as gifts so i do acknowledge that there is a bit of um, privilege in what i've got for daisy but like I said in the last section, I was sort of going between my grandmother's house and my parents' house. And this back and forth meant that I didn't really have a very robust setup for Daisy. So we did our best. And then shortly after getting Daisy, it wasn't very long. And then I moved into my place here. So this place has a garden and everything like that. And then I got to take my graduation gifts that I was using at either house and I got to bring them here and use them together. This is the setup Daisy has known for the last three and a half years of her life. So for most of her life, she has known this setup. I'm gonna start off with what I have in my room for Daisy's setup. Now, I got the cage um, from my grandmother, like I said, as a graduation gift. And what I've done is I've taken the door off the cage so it doesn't close. Um, so that Daisy can hop in and out as she wants to, so that she's got her own home base, as it were. Now, in the cage, I have got um, a water bowl, a food bowl, um, and then a litter box with some hay. Um, and Daisy can hop in and out of there as she pleases during the day when she's in my bedroom. So she's got her own home base. Um, and then in the... Um, other part of the house, I have got Daisy's housey. Now, the housey was a graduation gift from my parents, so I put that in my lounge part of my house. Um, the room we are currently in, it's actually right over there. Um, so I was able to put the housey in this corner, and that's Daisy's sort of home base slash area for staying when I'm not at home. So. So what happens is it's sort of the same setup, except in the housey I have, again, food, water, um, and then a litter box. And then there's some toys here and there in the housey. The house has multiple levels. So there's a top and then there's a bottom area. Um, and when I'm home, the door to the housey is open and Daisy can hop in and out as she wants. Um, and as she needs, she's then able to do that. So, um, yeah, I think it's pretty perfect. So I think that it's a pretty perfect setup for her being a free roam bunny. Now, those of you who have never owned a rabbit might say, what's free roam? What does that mean? It's pretty um, self-explanatory. Essentially what it means is, and this is in our house, this is how I choose to care for my rabbit. In our house, Daisy is a free roam rabbit. I don't have other animals. Um, and I don't have people who are allergic to her, children, etc., that need to be kept away from Daisy. So Daisy is free to roam around the house as she pleases when I am here. At night, when I go to my room, I do close my bedroom door, so she is free roam in my room. Now, I put Daisy away um, in her housey when I am not here. So if I have to pop out for a couple of hours or to work for an extended period of time and I don't want Daisy left on her own where she can hurt herself, I put her in her housey. Um, and then I have peace of mind. I know she's safe. She's got all her essentials. She's safe in the housey. Um, she can't get into anything she's not supposed to. Aside from damaging something that I love or not, um, I don't want her to get hurt. I don't want her to chew things um, or anything like that that I could catch if I was here. So I would say Daisy is free roam 97% of the time. Um, and, you know, she has got such a good active 
um, little life that I do not feel bad about protecting my bunny when I'm not here. So I use the housey for that purpose. Okay, next we are going to move on to how to feed your daisy bunny. Okay, everybody, so now we're going to talk about how to feed your rabbit. Now, in South Africa, we don't necessarily have a problem with having a lot of brands um, sold in South Africa. There are a lot of rabbit um, brands that are sold. The problem comes in with, I have not personally, and maybe you can sound off in the comments down below if you know of any, there aren't any South African brands that um, advocate for bunnies. Um, and so what that means is a lot of the products that I buy for Daisy are imported products. Now, I don't want any judgments. I've done a lot of research and I give Daisy the best of what I can afford and what can be imported into South Africa. So um, we are restricted by that. And sometimes, unfortunately, what also happens is because these products are imported, they sit at port for months at a time and then I have to wait months at a time to get access to products that Daisy needs on a regular basis. Which means that for a lot of products, I'm bulk buying. So when I see Daisy's um, pellets in a shop, I go out and I buy three or four bags at a time because when I come in next month to buy it, those pellets might not be there. And then they might not be there for four months and I have to feed my baby. So. You know, unfortunately in South Africa, that is some of the stuff we have to contain with. And I'm sure it's not just my experience, but it's probably the experience everywhere. Prices of everything have gone up. And because those bunny products are imported, they're expensive already. Now you factor in what's going on in the world economically on a global scale. Those products are just exorbitantly priced. Um, so they're scarce and they're expensive. So for the past couple of months, what I've had to do is bulk buy, unfortunately or fortunately, um, I've been in a position where I could buy a couple of months worth of stuff here and there um, so that I do have a little bit of a stockpile. Um, not a crazy amount, I don't have the space for a crazy amount, but maybe two bags of food um, instead of just one. Um, maybe three or four bags of different treats from the same brand so that I've got options next month if I go into the shop and they don't have anything. So it's things like that that, um, you know, I've had to go and do having Daisy. So without further ado, um, let's get into how bunnies eat. So how a bunny's diet is structured is it's mostly comprised of hay. Now I'll quickly put up a picture for you to see what a bunny's diet looks like. Essentially, as you can see, most of a bunny's diet comprises of hay and then we have a mixture of pellets and fresh food. So with Daisy, um, again, I don't want any criticism. I've hand raised Daisy. I've had her um, since she was very young, like I've said earlier. So for Daisy, pellets have never been a a treat or a, 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 I don't know, I see bunnies are very like greedy and food possessive over pellets. I leave pellets out for Daisy to eat at her will, like I do with hay. Um, Daisy eats hay when she wants to and she eats her pellets when she wants to. And I would say she's pretty balanced in her diet. She regulates her own eating and it's quite healthy. And I've never had a problem with her, you know, not eating her hay at all and only gravitating towards pellets. So um, yeah, the only thing I really regulate is the fresh food. And that's just because to have fresh food out for her all day, every day is so expensive. It's not happening. So her fresh food is her treat. Um, so I, I do give her fresh food twice a day. Uh, once in the morning and then once in the evening and Daisy eats a very big mix of fresh food I'll buy some stuff for the week and then you know it lasts about a week I spend about a hundred ish rand it depends again on price but about a hundred rand per week 
on Daisy's fresh food, give or take. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. Um, and Daisy eats everything from herbs. She loves mint, mint is her favorite. She loves basil. She um, is okay with dill. She also likes parsley and coriander. Um, and I sort of just mix those up and give her a little sprinkle. Um, we've just come out of winter and it's spring now. So I will start including more lettuce in her fresh mix. Um, in the summer, it gets very hot in South Africa. And while Daisy has access to bowls of water, I do like to put lettuce into her fresh bowl just to make sure that she's getting um, enough um, you know, hydration. So I do that for her. And then um, also for her fresh food, she eats um, baby corns. I break them up, I cut them up for her. She loves those. Sweet peppers. Um, I, she only likes the red and the orange. She'll eat the green if there's like a green spot on one of them. Or sometimes I've gotten a mix and cut them up. She's not a fan of the green, but she'll eat it if it's there. Um, but so I tend to stick to the red and the yellow or orange sweet peppers. And then a thing that she's gotten into, I'd say the last probably six to eight months, is green beans. But unfortunately, Madam is a bit of a snob, so it has to be the ones that have the ends cut off. <laughs> and if they're the fine green beans, she absolutely she'll snatch them from your hand. Um, so she's yeah, she loves those. And then I do feed Daisy fruit, but that is an like an absolute treat. Um, if I am eating um, strawberries in the morning with breakfast, I'll chop off the tops and I'll give her the tops of the strawberries. Um, she's not the biggest fan of banana. Sometimes she'll grab a banana. I think I've got a photo of her. Um, I was sitting on the floor spending time with her eating a banana for breakfast and this bunny climbed me and mounted my hand and was trying to eat some bananas. So <laughs> um, yeah, you can see her reaction that most bunnies have to pellets. Daisy has to banana. So <laughs> yeah, so she really enjoys her, her banana um, occasionally and apple. Sometimes I'll give her apple. It really does depend, and I always joke, that me and Daisy can share fresh food and salad in the summer. So if I buy something, I can almost always share it with Daisy, which is nice. Um, even carrots and things like that, um, I'll grate it up and I'll give her some shreds of grated carrots in her fresh food. So it's not really anything crazy. Um, and I do not feed her all of that all at once. Don't get me wrong. Um, I rotate it out. So I'll give her a little bit of, you know, something. Um, and I'm not packing her bowl full. So it's a small salad, you know, twice a day. She's a tiny bunny, so um, I don't want to overwhelm her. Okay, <laughs> this is a big box. Um, this is everything I pretty much use for Daisy. So I don't want you to now go and think, oh my gosh, she goes and she buys all the stuff um, every month. She's crazy. No, no, no. Dying stockpiles things, like I said. Um, so all of this has been acquired over time. Um, so please don't think that, you know, you need to spend two grand on a bunny um it's not it's not necessary so i'm just gonna i just wanted to show you everything together now while sorry about that now while it's not necessary to go and blow two thousand rand on a bunny um, and bunny stuff i do think that it is important that you do have um at least something um, like these products in the care of your bunny. I do believe that that is important. So let's first start off with <laughs> litter. Now, bunnies are litter trainable like cats, so they can use litter boxes. Daisy took to it quite naturally. Um, with rabbits, what's sort of the go-to is rabbits pick a corner of their cage or area as a litter box. 
um, and it's sort of your job as the human to then put the litter box there. That being said, Daisy's only had like three accidents, maybe, maybe three, in her whole life. Um, using a litter box was really natural for her and she only goes in her litter box. So even if she's, you know, playing in her tunnels or whatever, she will hop to her housey over there climb in her litter box and do what she needs to do so i think i just got very lucky um and we've never had any issues and yeah so um they are litter trainable like cats so i use this litter for daisy um this is the cheap option there are um some finer litters that you can use that are um, a little more expensive it's just outrageous um, out here for me to be buying the litter and it comes in smaller bags so it's more expensive for less volume I just couldn't do it anymore so this works for Daisy I've been using this for probably about two and a half ish years now Daisy's fine with it um, lasts me really long and I get it from the pet store um, in the shops it's just too expensive for some reason um, so I tend to buy two of these a month um, and I don't get to uh, get through two bags maybe a bag and a half it depends again it depends so um, but yeah I always buy two bags at the beginning of the month so that is litter then I'm going to get into hay. So, like I said, a bunny's um, diet comprises mainly of hay. Now, in maybe it's why I've never struggled with Daisy not eating her hay, but I create a mix for Daisy. So I usually buy um, the Burgess XL haze. Um, there's two, there's one with marigold and then there's one that's grass. So I normally buy those two and then I mix them in a hay container um, that's airtight because once you open those bags with these kinds of bags everything can get into the hay. So I've got a airtight container that I mix the hay in. Now this month I decided to buy this brand. I've never seen it before. I went to a different pet store this month so I got this. And again, variety is the spice of life, guys. You wouldn't eat the same meal every day for the rest of your life. So why do we expect bunnies to eat the same brand of hay for their whole life and not expect them to get bored? Um, and I think maybe that's why I got so lucky with Daisy not um, getting bored with her hay. I'm quite good at, you know, giving her a variety. And once in a while, I will go out and buy a different brand of hay, mix it into the existing mix I've got going, and Daisy's always eating her hay um, and that and the other treats I'll show you now um, and I think between that method that I've got going Daisy's not gonna get bored of her hay and yeah she's pretty she's a pretty good hay eater so this is what I got this month um, but hay is a big big part of feeding your rabbit then speaking of hay I've got these hay additive things um, um, now I stick to Burgess XL for these. The other brands have got either like seeds in them or nuts in them and that's not great for bunnies. This tends to just be um, like dried flowers or stuff like that so I tend to stick to Burgess. Um, and you can see again I've got a variety here so this is part of my stockpile. Um, I didn't buy this this month. Um, I think I bought this one, ooh, I want to say maybe April, and then this one was probably a bit before that, February, and you can see they're still closed and sealed. So, yeah, these are nature snacks. I sprinkle a little bit of these onto Daisy's hay, um, and I think my hay mix plus these kinds of products which I'll open one at a time and sprinkle over her hay. I think that's what gives me the magic touch in terms of um, feeding Daisy. Then we're gonna move on to pellets. Now, I 
again unfortunately because we live in South Africa and we import Burgess products um, I this month faced a problem where Daisy's usual pellets which um, you know I'll show you now aren't, aren't available in South Africa um, the pet store I usually go to she told me to my face I can't tell you when the stuff's coming in so you'll just have to wait um, so unfortunately Daisy's usual pellets um, I couldn't get however I was able to snag a bag of Burgess um, rabbit pellets like regular rabbit pellets so it's not the indoor um, which I'm not a fan of and I've still got quite a bit of the indoor left in Daisy's feeder container so what I'm gonna do is slowly I'm gonna mix it in because I think I've got about a bag's worth in there I'll mix it in to slowly transition her and then hopefully we get her stuff in again but yeah like I said I just fill up a bowl and when it's empty I fill it up again and Daisy will go in and munch when she's hungry um, and usually she'll go between her pellets and her hay all by herself so um, I don't recommend if your bunny I don't want to say covets pellets but if your bunny sees pellets as a treat and they eat everything straight away then don't give your bunny unlimited pellets um, but I've hand raised Daisy and her relationship with pellets is different so yeah it's definitely something to take on a bunny by bunny case basis rather than saying a blanket statement this is how you should feed your bunnies so yeah that's this I, I try and stick to Burgess for rabbit food it's the most nutritious um, and just trustworthy and uh, yeah I've, I've never had a problem besides the import issues but the food itself is really good okay then we're gonna move on to snacks now again this is my stash so I don't want anyone to have heart failure um, but this is my bunny treat stash and I do have a controversial brand um, out here, but anyway, I suppose we'll get there. Um, so let me start off with the Burgess treats. So I get Daisy these Burgess, um, I think they're called rabbit cookies. I don't know. They're just they're biscuits and... Um, I don't feed her them whole. I'm not crazy. <laughs> what I do tend to do is I will break up um, a singular biscuit into four or five smaller pieces. And then um, I usually use these treats to stimulate Daisy. Um, and, you know, I'll throw some in her dig box or I'll throw some in the tunnels or... Um, in her little roller ball um, and you know I use it for her to play with rather than as like a oh here's a treat um, and Daisy's not a bunny that does tricks so um, I don't use them for her to do tricks either it's really just um, as a play method and for us here in South Africa during summer it rains and it pours and if Daisy does not get outside time she is a menace I call her my child of chaos, but she is a, a menace when she does not get her outside time. So having um, treats that I can use with toys to stimulate her brain, to get out some excess energy, this is my toolbox. So this is what I use. Now for the Burgess biscuits, um, over some holidays we get different flavors, I guess you could call them. I don't know how they taste, I couldn't tell you. Um, but I buy the different bags um, and rotate the flavors here. You can see I've got two different ones. There's also a blue one um, that also goes around. I thought I had the bag open, but I don't. Um, there's a blue one. And um, at Christmas time, I think we had a red one. So yeah, these are a staple. I think I've been buying these particularly the longest. So those were a winner. Then I also buy the, or oh, recently I bought these Nature Snacks um, bars. Now, again, I don't give these to Daisy. I break them up 
and um, I stick them in her hay mostly. Um, it was because there was a certain time where I could not buy these, hence the stockpile, because they just weren't in, in the stores. Um, and so, you know, I couldn't find them online either. It was horrible. So I resorted to having to buy these and these were only available online. So I bought some of these um, and now I just keep for in case. Um, and, you know, as I rotate through and buy new stuff, I'll use them. But this is a hay additive, as I call it. So that's what these are for. And again, um, these tend not to have any of the things that people find controversial in it, like nuts and seeds. So I like those for Daisy. And I also like buying, it's called, um, from this brand, it's called Selective Naturals. Now they have a pink box as well. Um, and it's basically hay loops. So again, treats, um, I don't give her, it's like a biscuit about that big. Again, I don't feed it to a hole, break it up into pieces and use it as a um, playtime treat. So that's also a winner. Daisy's also got a snuffle mat. You crumble one of these up on the snuffle mat, straight in there. She loves this. So that I've been buying probably for the past two years. Probably, no, I'm lying to you, since lockdown, I discovered this brand. So that's a winner. Um, and then we come to probably the more controversial brand, and that is um, the okay is the brand Rosewood Naturals. So apparently, some of these treats do tend to have nuts and seeds in them. I I do look at the ingredients list and the ones or the, the items I buy from this brand, I try and stay away from the ones with seeds and nuts in it. Um, so I know this is an empty bag, but I have to show you the carotees, as they're called, go down a treat in our house. Um, Daisy loves these. Um, I will sprinkle a couple of them in her dig box. In fact, if you say to her, Daisy, go play box, she, she, she knows. You know, you, you don't even have to say it twice. So, and this is usually what I put in her dig box. Okay, and then the last two things, again, I sort of rotate between all of these products from this brand. And again, I bought these because the Burgess biscuits weren't in stock. They just wasn't stock. And Daisy needed treats. So now I just keep a rotating stockpile for in case. Um, Okay, so there are these grainless herb and veg drops. These are a big um, yes when we put them in the tunnels and we um, play hide and seek or fetch. Those are a winner. Um, and then these are also a very big winner is the apple and strawberry bunnies. Um, these are just so cute. I love them. And I, again, break them up and sprinkle them into her dig box or into the tunnels or whatever the case may be and she loves them okay and then one of the last products i want to show you is and this one is very used is the scouts on a urine destroyer so um i buy this from woolworths it is heckin expensive but very much well worth it so sometimes with daisy um because she's obviously doing what she needs to do in a corner sometimes there's a bit of overflow or whatever the case may be um and you know because her inside of her cage is plastic because the inside of the house is wood sometimes there is mess that i have to clean up um, and this gets the job done it gets rid of staining it gets rid of the What's the word? The, there's not, not really a smell, but if there was a smell, this would get rid of it. Um, so when I clean out Daisy's housey and her cage, I will wipe it down with this. So yeah, I'm sure it's probably for dogs um, instead, but it says here that it's um, 
you know, eco-friendly and all of that jazz. And because it comes from Woolworths, it means it's cruelty free and it's backed by Beauty Without Cruelty. So that's like a double win in my book. It's effective and it's cruelty free. So this is a must for me with the bun bun. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about how to groom and clean up after your bunny. So first thing is with regards to baths. Um, now bunnies are again, a lot like cats um, and they do tend to groom themselves quite well. Now Daisy is almost always grooming herself. She licks herself and you know, cleans herself off. That being said, <laughs> there have been one or two situations where Daisy has gotten into something and gotten dirty and I don't want her licking herself clean, um, getting whatever she's got on her into her digestive system. So a thing about bunny digestion is that um, what goes in must come out. Bunnies don't have a um, body function, bodily function um, or the ability to throw up so what goes in must come out and sometimes i don't want her licking fertilizer that's gotten put in the garden or i don't want her licking mud off of her so you know there's been the odd situation um so it's ended up probably in her four years of life she's probably gotten about four baths um where i've had to clean her up so yes daisy has gotten baths but um there is a lot of criticism about bathing your rabbit which um yeah i don't know the the biggest thing is apparently bunnies become hypothermic when you bath them um which i haven't found because where i live it's usually very hot when i'm giving daisy a bath and i'm um, over 30 degrees celsius so um yeah we've never she's dry in an hour i throw her outside watch her play and an hour later she's bone dry so um, that's never been a problem. I don't live in the colder places that these people who say this is an issue, um, I haven't experienced that. So that, that's um, pretty much on bathing your bunny. Then we have to talk about trimming your rabbit's nails. Now, um, <laughs> initially what I did with Daisy is I would take her to the vet um, every four to six weeks ish and I would have the vet to trim her nails. Now that became financially um, unsuitable I suppose you could say um, and also I was becoming more and more terrified that they were taking her out of the vet room and to the back to trim her nails so um, yeah that just wasn't a situation I was willing to really um, engage with anymore and I thought to myself you know what my mom has a set of dog nail clippers and I said to her can I please take this and I want to try and cut Daisy's nails and she said sure and it took a long time and every time I asked on a rabbit group everyone was like oh well get another person and I was like that's not feasible I don't live um you know with other people who can handle Daisy a and b Daisy doesn't like being handled by strangers so what am I supposed to do am I supposed to have a stranger hold Daisy or do I let a stranger try and clip her nails um <laughs> it doesn't work so um it's definitely in our house a one-man job cannot be done by two um so rabbit groups weren't very helpful except for maybe what to look out for when you trim the rabbit's nails so um I had to learn quickly and on my own and I started off slowly and I clipped very minimally the nail because I'm so um, scared that I clip too close to her quick and then we have a you know bloody nail and all of that jazz so um, it was definitely small trims in the beginning and um, I can proudly say I can trim my rabbit's nails all by myself um, is it difficult sometimes yes does she fuss pretty much all the time um, do I know how to do it without hurting her yes I'm very happy to say that and can I just brag for a second? I am so good at it that I can now cut dog's nails too. My mom lets me cut um, her and my dad's dog's nails. So I'm very, very happy with um, the progress I've made. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a skill I had to learn and it's now a skill that I can use for all the family's animals, not just Daisy. Alrighty, then we've got um, brushing your bunny. So 
rabbits go through a seasonal shed so there's smaller ones during august um which is springtime for us and then about april-ish which is um autumn for us and then they also go through bigger sheds through winter and summer so um yeah daisy basically sheds all the time my house is covered in rabbit hair um, i vacuum seven days a week doesn't help um <laughs> it just makes me feel better but anyway so you have to brush your bunnies like i've said um bunnies ingest whatever fur and whatever when they are grooming themselves so you really want to brush your bunny to help them through those shedding seasons which means that with daisy when i notice that she um you know is shedding quite a bit more than usual or is normal then i will brush her and help just clear her coat um so that she's also not ingesting a bunch of hair that will then cause digestive illness down the line so that's on um brushing your bunny. Okay, now we're on to the fun times of this video. So, um, first of all, the biggest toy for me is the garden. So the yard um, is our biggest toy for Daisy. Um, I've said before in this video that if Daisy does not get her outside time at least a minimum of 20 minutes a day, she is a demon. Like, I do not recognize this bunny. Um, get an exorcist, we need help. Like, it's that bad. So Daisy loves playing outside. Um, the biggest thing for us is we live in a sunny place. We live in a hot place. So take advantage of that. Let her play outside. My garden is mostly fenced in. She can't get out anywhere to get hurt anywhere. Um, but that doesn't matter because when Daisy is outside, she is supervised. Um, and Daisy gets up to about two hours a day. Um you know of playtime outside sometimes that looks like her playing outside twice a day for an hour each sometimes that looks like 20 minutes at a clip sometimes that looks like me trying to get her outside you know and she's just outside for five minutes before she runs back inside um but i do try and give her that um you know outside time to stimulate her brain to get her active to keep her active um because that's what she needs and we've proven that between me and her she is destructive when she does not get her outside time so she is outside a lot um and when it rains we have to make other arrangements but um yeah she she plays outside and it is always supervised now people always say to me um how do you find two hours in a day to um you know sit outside and wash a rabbit obviously if i need to i will bring my laptop outside and um you know i can be fiddling with work while i'm watching daisy um she is pretty good though i think i got really lucky with my first rabbit daisy comes when she's called um and if i say no don't do that or daisy stop or daisy no she'll come away so um she's very well behaved i always check the garden because unfortunately this neighborhood has a lot of cats so i'm always checking the garden um always checking up on her and if she goes out of sight i'm up and i'm there watching her you know then work can wait unfortunately that is the commitment i made when i got a rabbit um who needs outside time i am saying that is what this animal needs and i'm giving her that so um it's not sacrificing anything on my side I'm I'm giving my bunny what she needs so outside time big resource as a toy for us okay then another outside toy resource for us is daisy sandpit now i've had the sandpit forever literally it's pretty much as old as i am um it was my sandpit as a child and my parents just kept it for some reason when we moved two or three times it's always stayed at their house so um when i got daisy and i saw people were making like these massive dig boxes or um their bunnies were digging in their planter boxes i had a light bulb moment and i was like okay let me get a sand put fill it with potting soil let daisy go to town she loves to dig <laughs> um and it, it's a massive um toy for us that you know daisy just loves and um yeah she's almost always in it at least once a day digging sniffing trying to find something so um that that outside sand pit is amazing 
Alrighty, and then another toy that we use inside, now that we're moving inside with the toys, um, an uh, inside toy that is quite popular with Daisy is her dead boxes. Now, um, what happens is I ordered something online once um, and I got a decent sized box. It was deep enough and big enough. What I did was I crunched up newspaper into balls, tossed it in the box, and then what I do is I break up a couple of the treats that I've already shown you um, and I sprinkle them into the box. Madam hops in there and she is searching for the parts of the, or the treats, um, parts and, you know, stimulating her brain, foraging for these biscuits and eating them and she just loves them. I've got one in the lounge and one in my bedroom so um, yeah there is no shortage of dig boxes they're very popular and if you say to Daisy I think I've said this already but if you say to Daisy um, you want to play box play box she knows immediately she'll hop right over so um, yeah that is also a massive um, indoor toy that we cannot do without in this house. Okay, and then lastly are just some assorted inside toys that we use. Unfortunately, there seems to be a real lack of bunny toys or toys made specifically for rabbits. Um, a lot of it is things made for other animals or not animals at all that rabbits just tend to use. So can somebody get on that? <laughs> I can't. I'm not I'm not I'm not the one, but can someone get on that please? Um, so some of Daisy's favorite toys are, there is this plastic ball that's got holes in it. Um, I will break up a treat and put it in there. And then the idea is Daisy has to roll the ball and chase it to catch the little pieces of treats. Um, then something I had to get is a bird, a wood bird toy that you tend to hang in a bird cage. I hang it off the side of Daisy's cage or inside her housey um, on the wire. The wall um, is made of wire, as, as you saw, um, and I hang them on there and Daisy loves them. She like charges at them full speed and then she grabs a piece of the wood in her mouth and she chucks it from side to side and yeah, that, that's a great um, toy for us. I do have to be careful though because some bird toys have bird seed on them, bunnies can't have seeds. So I'm always buying the ones without the seeds um, and so far it's been pretty good for us. Um, and then another one is um, she also enjoys her stacking cups. Now these are for children, um, <laughs> but um, so I suppose it makes sense. Daisy is my child, but anyway. Um, so they take these cups and Daisy throws them. And you say to her, are you the cuppiest bunny ever? That's the phrase. And I say, cuppy, cuppy bunny. And she'll take it in her mouth and she'll throw it. Um, you know, like not far. She's not you know a baseball player but she'll like toss it and then you say to her did you just throw the cups and then she'll take another one and do the same thing so very interactive toy she loves her cups i've got two sets and they are spread around the house i think there's one set in my room and then one set in the lounge that is spread under the coffee table and in her housey so those are always a winner for us and then there's a whole bunch of assorted toys um you know everywhere and i oh and then there's also another one is nice um these ones i think are made for money specifically but it's small pieces of wood um, that are obviously treated that a bunny can eat it and um, you literally just hand it to Daisy and she starts nibbling on it and yeah very very handy um, yeah that's pretty much all I can think of there are probably some assorted toys that I'm not mentioning but um, always be careful when you are picking out toys that are not specifically designed for rabbits it can be difficult to know um if you are not sure i would rather stay away and stick to what is known out there um yeah and do your research obviously okay let's talk medicine and um bunnies so first of all i just want to start off this discussion with um i know that not everyone has access to uh, veterinary services where they live in South Africa, exotic vets are not commonplace um, and they are very expensive. So um, yeah, I just wanna say I understand that. However, um, a lot of people who get rabbits seem to be in a position to say, you know, I have got a um, rabbit savvy vet in my area. 
um, but I just don't want to take my bunny to them. But that, that's a different discussion we'll have in a minute. So first things first is I had to find a rabbit savvy vet for Daisy. Out here we call them exotic animal vets. So you get um, normal pet um, veterinary um, practitioners and then you get um, agricultural or um, that kind of type of animal vets and then you get exotic animal vets so um, we had to find an exotic vet luckily we found one um, it's not close but it's not far away um, it is in Menland, so it's not too far from where I'm staying now um, and I am very happy with them Daisy had a touch of stasis about a year and a half two years ago and they sorted her right out they knew exactly what to do what to look for what tests to run all of that jazz so that would be my number one recommendation is before you even acquire the rabbit find your rabbit savvy vet um, and make sure you know where they are because you do not want disaster to strike something to go horribly wrong and then you suddenly need to look for a vet and a vet that specializes in rabbits so um, definitely something to look for um, then secondly is I am in the position where I am able to afford um, pet insurance for Daisy so you know me and my mom I joke it's her um, grand bunny contribution <laughs> um, so that's she helps me out with that we go half um, and you know we we split the costs on that um, and Daisy is on the most comprehensive package now um, very recently we changed that just because Daisy is getting on and um, yeah I wanted to have the most comprehensive cover possible um, there are good plans out there for accidents and illness and stuff like that um, that give you quite a bit of your money back um, if your rabbit gets sick so it's just about investigating a little bit and seeing what you can do reasonably um, I'm not saying everyone has to be on a top premium plan but if you can afford it um, it might be helpful to have pet insurance I don't have three and a half four thousand rand lying around to have Daisy x-rayed and to give her shots and to get her meds and to run blood work um, so for me to contribute a little bit of money every month um, that is not even <laughs> any card payment that I pay or any bill that I pay it's probably the smallest amount um, of all the bills that I pay for me it's worth it it gives me that peace of mind so something to consider there then the last thing I want to talk about about medical um, aspects with the bunny is please make sure you get your bunnies spayed and neutered okay it is scary I'm gonna lie to you um, and the earlier you do it the better um, I find a lot of bunnies, if you get them from a rescue, so like the RSPCA and stuff like that, they tend to fix rabbits for you. Um, so that's nice, then you don't have to worry about that expense. I chose to have Daisy Spade. Um, I, I think we were doing our third fake pregnancy after her puberty um, hormones had hit. And I said to myself, I'm not doing this. I can't do this. Um, and I can imagine it must be very stressful for the animal not understanding. They've built the nest. Where's the babies? So I chose to have Daisy spayed. And also it helps eliminate cancer down the line. So if I can extend the life of my rabbit, I'm going to do it. Um, she was quite young when we had her um, spayed. Probably close to a year old i think that's pretty late as far as bunnies go um i just couldn't afford it before then honestly so we we um did it then around then and um yeah it, it was the best decision i ever made the um, nest building stopped pretty much immediately i did not see a change in daisy's personality um some people report that their bunnies become less aggressive um <laughs> daisy is still as spunky as ever her relationship with me didn't change she didn't become more cuddly or um anything like that but um i have heard that that is something that can um happen with your bunny i think i got a more sweet natured bunny than most people get but unfortunately, and we'll talk about this um, in the next part a little bit, people don't seem to realize that their bunnies, they go from being little to being teenagers with all these hormones. 
and there is a mood change um, and shift with the bunny and then suddenly the bunny is aggressive and is going for them and all those things and then they think I'm gonna just dump this bunny because it's aggressive and mean um, instead of doing their research and seeing okay bunnies go through a puberty and then they need to be fixed and fixing the rabbit can fix that kind of um, aggressiveness and all of that so um, we'll get to it but at the end of the day please you know spay and neuter your bunnies um, uh, it not only does it stop them from dying of reproductive cancer which they do inevitably get if you breed with them um, but down the line it's also nice um, to know that you know you are taking care of your rabbit and your rabbit is not having some bunnies that are going to be dumped you know because people are just having bunny babies that nobody wants there are plenty of bunnies in shelters i cannot tell you my heart breaks all the time seeing all these abandoned bunnies in shelters and um it kills me because <laughs> i'm not in america or in england i can't go and grab five bunnies and bring them home and foster them um so yeah please make sure that you spay and neuter your bunnies um, it is an absolute must and I feel it's something that if you get a dog you would expect to spay or neuter your dog typically so you know the same should be um, you know thought about or conceived for a rabbit. Okay, and then lastly, we are going to talk about rabbit personalities. Now, I know I'm drawing a lot of uh, similarities um, to cats, but rabbits are a lot like cats, unfortunately or fortunately. Um, it's up to you how you look at it. But rabbits are typically very aloof um, and, you know, not very cuddly animals. And I have said since the day I got Daisy, it's a shame they look like that because all you want to do is schnookums it and cuddle it and smooch it and love on it and they don't want to be held and cuddled at all so i always say it's a shame bunnies look like that because their personalities are not that way at all um so that that's something that you have to um you know really take into account when you get a rabbit that you know, like with cats yes there are some rabbits who are cuddly and yes there are some cats who are cuddly but for majority of that of that um, animal group they are aloof and they are cold and they do not want to be held and cuddled and snuggled all the time so that was something i really had to get used to with having a rabbit um, daisy being my first rabbit i didn't really know and then you google and you find these things out and you realize okay this is not a snuggle bunny <laughs> as i like to call her um this is a pet that you need to um let come to you on her terms for affection so daisy's personality um <laughs> even though she's fixed she can be quite aggressive to strangers so she doesn't like strange people especially if somebody comes here to the flat not happy at all she charges she tries to bite she's not a fan um, she dislikes men for some reason more than women the reaction is far more violent with a strange man than a strange woman so yeah Daisy is not a fan of strangers she's very protective she'll stand in front of me and charge at someone um, so that's good I guess um, now with other animals it depends um, for example my parents have got a Labrador and a Rhodesian Ridgeback mix Okay, so the Labrador, very calm around Daisy, doesn't really care, will lie next to her, very protective of Daisy, those two get on, she's fine. With the Rhodesian Ridgeback mix, um, Daisy is a little aggressive, she charges, she snorts, she grunts, um, and the Rhodesian Ridgeback I don't know what she would do with Daisy. We've never had them be alone like her in the lab. So with the Rhodesian Ridgeback, you know, I'm not leaving Daisy alone with her. She's quite rough 
<laughs> I think she's very sweet as a dog, but she's very rough. And Daisy charges at her through a um, cage wall. So I'm not really game to mix the two and to test the Rhodesian Ridgeback's um, patience. So yeah i think it depends um daisy chases cats which is fabulous as well that's very funny um so yeah unfortunately daisy's personality is that w of which um she is alone she's grown up alone and i know you're supposed to have a bonded pair for rabbits i cannot financially afford to have the upkeep of two bunnies so i only have one and i am daisy's Friend. I say that um, you know she hangs out with me she follows me around the house um, if I am outside she'll come and hop outside if I go inside she'll follow me inside if I move from the bedroom to my office she'll come she'll follow me so you know while she's aloof and not very cuddly we are friends we are buddies and yeah it's really cute um, but that is the one reason why she isn't in a bonded pair and why i will not be doing it because um and at this stage of her life i am her other bonded pair bunny so yeah that that's um it and you know i think also what has helped our relationship is um i have had her since she was very very young so daisy hasn't really you know had the opportunity to grow up without being handled a lot and then being handled a lot and so she has that reaction you know that aggressive reaction um she i and i i you know i um don't always pick her up i try and get her to hop on her own to a space if i want her in a certain area or something um but she lets me pick her up and um she doesn't like cuddling but she will let me hold her to transport her um to and fro so that's one thing um and then also um because she's not a cuddly bunny but she does like spending time with me because she's not a cuddly bunny and she does like spending time with me what i will do is i often will sit on the floor next to her wherever she's at um and i'll pet her and all of, all of that jazz and then um you know when she's done i'll just sit next to her and just spend time with her i feel like a lot of people they want pets to do something um and rabbits aren't dogs you know um they just want your comfort of your presence next to them they don't want to be fussed at and all of that jazz so yeah i do spend a lot of time on the floor with her as well as outside with her when she has her outside time so yeah no um i think we've had um a lot of bonding because i've had her so young and one sweet thing i have to admit um i don't have a cuddly bunny um and she lets me hold her and she lets me cuddle her as much as she'll let me um as much as her patience allows but um one thing i have noticed over the last few years is when i am on my deathbed sick um and i am you know asleep in bed daisy will hop up on the bed and she will lie at my feet um and it's just uh i feel who have saying i'm here i know you're not feeling well um and i don't like to cuddle but i'm here so that you can get some comfort from my presence the way i give her comfort with mine so you know there is some sort of relationship there i will say even though she is miss aloof sometimes okay and then the last thing that i want to talk about is something that is a little more sad a little more serious but that definitely needs to be touched on and that is that a lot of bunnies get abandoned um and i see them all the time people just go and dump their rabbits please your domestic rabbit pet is not going to survive in the wild they need you to look after them um and it breaks my heart that people would do that and a lot of the times people do that because rabbits personalities are not what people think they are so um you know instead of going and buying bunnies and then dumping them because you weren't prepared for the um the commitment and you weren't prepared for what a bunny is like and you didn't go and do your research don't you know affect your um poor planning on an animal an innocent at the end of the day um so please make sure that you read and that you know what is coming with your bunny if you get them from a young age have they reached 
puberty yet um, and does that mean that they're going to be a little more aggressive can you afford to spay them um, but please don't abandon your bunnies it is so heartbreaking um, and it's something that's not the animal's fault so um, as people I feel like we need to be more conscious um, when we make a decision for me I was going to do anything and everything for Daisy when I got her I didn't need to do um, thorough research a year into it when I found out that bunnies could be spayed in my area I thought to myself you know what fine it's going to cost me money I'm going to go and get her spayed not oh my gosh she's now this aggressive bunny she's digging all these nests let me go dump her um, but that's the relationship I had with Daisy um, and I feel people before they go and they spend the money and do the, the, the thing of getting the animal go and do the research first um, we all have access to the internet we all have access to Google um, simply go and do 10-15 minutes of reading and you'll know immediately if an animal is for you or not and this doesn't just go for rabbits even though this is my area of caring it goes for every area with every animal. If you get a breed of dog that is high energy, please do that research before you get the dog because abandoning that animal is not right. Abandoning animals isn't right to any degree. Um, so make sure that you are aware of any commitment with any animal before you go and get them. Um, and that's just, that was, thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> um, but yeah, perfect. Okay, everyone, so that's everything on how to care for your bunny 101, pretty much. Um, if you want to um, know anything else about what I do for Daisy, you're more than welcome to leave a comment down below. Also, please comment for me what your favorite part of the video was, or if you have a bunny, comment what your bunny's favorite treat is, and let me know, you know, what you um, guys have available in your country. I'm always fascinated when I see what other people have available for their bunnies in their home countries. Um, but from me and Daisy, even though she's giving you the butt right now, we want to say thank you for watching, leave a like.